Hey, just a warning, while Fuller House is a family show, the Fullest House podcast is not. Listener discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to the Fullest House podcast, where dancing is illegal here. Unless some plucky, handsome youth with a notary stamp wants to come and change some hearts and minds. I'm Mark Green. I'm Harrison Bloom. And I'm Zach Horowitz. And we're here with a strong Footloose reference to start off this episode. Yep. Which I'm sure will not be relevant later at all in the plot of the Fuller House episode we're watching. (laughs) No, this episode has no connections or references to Footloose. We were just saying that for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. We're just really big fans of Footloose here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Speaking of things completely not related to Footloose, the episode opens with DJ dancing, and guys, the audience is loving it. Oh, yeah. They're, they are. They're having a good time watching her dance with herself, and then yep. Kimmy comes in, and, and she starts dancing, and it's all very weird, but... Yep. <laughs> and then Steph comes in, and she's not dancing, and they're all like, yep. hey, Steph, why aren't you dancing? And Steph's like, I got a baby to take care of. I got a of. baby. I have to do laundry. I have to do laundry for the baby. And she says that. You don't want the baby to run out of clothes, do you? She says that. What are you, that. a monster? You want a naked baby? <laughs> <laughs> she says all that. She does say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That was actually the abridged version. She actually goes on for like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Half of the runtime of this episode is Steph getting really, really upset at them for wanting her to go out. You know, out I'm, I'm really glad them. that Fuller House is really starting to uh, appreciate Jodie Sweden as an actress more, giving yeah. her like this full monologue that takes up half the episode. Yeah. Yeah. Very strange that they just let her do this monologue. You know, they yeah. just stand there and let her do it. It's very, it's, it's an interesting creative choice. They don't. Well, every once in a while, you see them like open up their mouth as if to say, "Like, um, Steph," but she just like cuts them off. That's how in it she is. Yeah. But anyway. Anyway, what really happens? (laughs) Yeah. That it's It's, girls' night. It's mom's night out. Mom's night out. Yay! Yay! But Steph doesn't think she can go because she's got the baby. Yeah. Yeah. How dare she? How dare she be a new mother and not want to go out dancing with her sister? (laughs) With her sister and her sister's friend. Yeah, you know what DJ should do? She should peer pressure Stefan to go in with her by saying that she's turning into DJ. Yeah. That, yep, that happens. And Steph says, oh, my Lanta, I can't believe you'd say the what? (laughs) She's turning into, (laughs) she's even adopting her catchphrase for some reason. Yeah. How rude. (laughs) <laughs> I was about to say, DJ's How like, rude. you're stealing my catchphrase. How rude. <laughs> <laughs> so Steph's like, okay, I don't want to turn into DJ, so I guess I'm going to go get ready for this girl's night out. Yeah, she's like, I don't want to turn into DJ, so I'll go do what DJ tells me to do. <laughs> yeah. And then who should show up at the door? But a couple of fun characters that we haven't seen in a while. Yeah. It's Matt and Gia yeah. and Rocky. And Rocky. That's right. They're here. And Matt. They're here. <laughs> and Matt isn't an asshole anymore. It's great. Matt isn't. Yes. He's just normal Matt. It's very good. For a second, I thought they were just like coming to hang I out. I kind of love Matt in this episode. Oh, he's great. Matt's, Matt is very good in this episode. He is. He His heel turn is over. Yeah. He is back to being our, our, our sweet, lovable himbo. Yes. Yes. Of course, the greatest himbo on this show is Jimmy Gibbler. <laughs> yeah. She's, who is not in this episode? Pretty much so an Matt S-tier takes over. Himbo at this yeah. point, like yeah. Jimmy Jimmy Gibbler at this point is like when I think of a himbo, I think of Jimmy Gibbler. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy is hard to beat. My one critique is I think he should still have the long hair. Yes, he should the long hair long. really completed the look. I think it complements his himbo ness. Mm-hmm. Yes, but that's a minor nitpick. Yeah, but but Rocky leaves to go talk to Ramona. I very much was thinking, hey, none of these people live here. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are enough people in this house. Yeah. It can't be even more four. We can't have a more four house. Well, where would we even go from there? Where would we even go from four house? More four house? They have a guest house outside in the backyard. Like, it's just a shed. And, like, Fernando lives there. <laughs> Matt and Gia live there. 
Well, that raises the question, does that make the house more full if they were building another separate house for more Fuller people Fuller houses. Yes. Fuller oh, houses. That's, yes. that's where we go. That's where we that's go. That's the natural oh progression. Fuller oh that's gosh. the Fuller natural houses. progression from full house to fuller house to fuller houses. Yeah. <laughs> Screw that fullest house idea that we stole from the people who would most logically make the show. Yeah. <laughs> And they just keep making new ones and the title gets like a little different, like because fuller houses, now you've modified both the words full and house. Yeah. And yes. so it's just, you keep making shows infinitely until the title is completely different. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this analogy kind of works. It's like you're playing Jenga where you're like slowly changing up one thing at a time yeah. until you just create something completely different. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then eventually the tower just falls down. <laughs> Fans of the series will, like, look back on it and be like, wow, remember that shitty era of this franchise yeah. where it was called Full House and was about a family that lived in a big house? <laughs> instead of instead of J-Money flying through space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tune in in 20 years for a new hit show, Here We Are. Here We Are, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which stars J Money in space. Yep. Yes, J Money will be in space. So anyway, the reason that Matt and Gia are here is because they need DJ for some reason to be their notary. Well, because she's a notary. Well, yeah, she's a notary. Yeah. I don't know why they need DJ specifically though. To... Well, I assume it's just easier to get a hold of their friend DJ than to get a hold of a different notary public. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'm overthinking it. But they're here. They're here for DJ and her. I, I think. I think DJ's more convenient than others. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but DJ's a licensed notary, which makes too much sense yeah. given this character. <laughs> and this scene starts a disturbing trend in this episode where DJ uses her notary skills to do things that notaries cannot do. <laughs> for example, uh, IMDb trivia, uh, because Matt and Gia got married in the state of Nevada, so DJ can't... Well, okay. She's a, she's from the state of California. She can't notarize out-of-state marriages. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's a what? good, that's a good <laughs> that's, point. Anyway, that yeah, that's the point. big, that's the big twist. They're like, DJ, we need a document notarized. And she's like, oh, what is it? I assume oh, it's yeah. some very innocuous document. They're like, actually, it's a marriage license because we're married <laughs> to each other. Whoa. Yep, Matt. Matt is definitely hurting from DJ's rejection and he's making some yep. big oh life decisions. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. And uh oh my god. But that's I did not think of that that she would not be able to notarize an out of state yeah. marriage yeah. license. It's an out of state marriage of license. Course. DJ yeah. DJ, so. have you no respect for the law? Well, clearly no, based on her actions later in the episode. Yeah, that no. Oh, this is the first of many offenses that DJ commits with her notary stamp, including but not limited to uh, using it with Steve for weird sex stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was Steve, thinking of Steve that. is apparently <laughs> very turned on by her notary public status. And like, listen, I'm not. I don't. I don't want to judge anybody. I'm not trying to judge, but like, you know. You got to separate work and play a bit, you know? Yeah. Do, do they, like, do role plays where he's, like, he needs to get a document stamped and she's, like, you know, you don't have the right permits. And he's, like, well, there must be something I can do. And <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Steve is notarized? Like, Steve the person? <laughs> yeah. There must be something I can do. Oh, you don't care about having the proper permits? You're such a bad boy. <laughs> well, maybe I won't oh, be so bad God. if I were notarized. <laughs> Notarize me all night long. Oh, oh no! She just starts notarize me, daddy. Him. Notarize me harder. She just starts stamping. Notarize me, daddy. Oh Jesus oh, Christ! Oh God! I I hate this. I'm gonna move on to the next part of the episode now, so that I no longer have to think well, about this conversation well, I just, we just had. I just I just wanted to ask one. You're so thing. uncomfortable about sex, Zach. <laughs> I just want to ask one thing. Basically, any time DJ says or does anything, Steve is like, oh, that turns me on when you're very organized, when you're when you're a notary, when yeah. you notarize things. 
Do you think Steve is lying? Do you oh, think Steve is just like trying not to way. hurt his girlfriend's feelings? So he just <laughs> covers it up by pretending to be really turned yeah. on all the time. And then he, the he like turns to Matt afterwards and he's like, look, she's she's just really into this whole notary thing. I just I just don't want to let her. I just, you know, I don't want to yeah. make her sad. I'm going to make her sad. I'm going to pretend I'm into it. Like, you know, yeah. like, it, you know, relationships are all about compromise and like, yeah. you know, you know, I deal with her weird notary thing. She deals with my whole weird foot thing. It balances out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and DJ is just like, Steve, what are you talking about? And he's like, nothing. I love just how cool and good you are at notarizing things. Being a notary. Just how cool and good you are at notarizing things. By the way, nice feet. <laughs> <laughs> it works for them. It yeah. Yeah. Steve's a podiatrist, okay? Get your head out of the gut. Yeah. Oh, the, the final thing I want to note about this scene before we move on is that DJ says to Gia, oh, what marriage is this for you? Three? And Gia goes, four. And Matt goes, four? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Matt did not know how many times Gia was married. This was a good decision. <laughs> this is a very good decision. <laughs> Which will have no repercussions at all. <laughs> yep. And DJ tells them, hey... We're gonna, you know, what we were just on our way out, and Matt's like, "Oh, why don't you guys? Here's a great idea. Why don't you guys take Gia with you, so that way I can stay here with my stepdaughter, who totally wants to spend time with me. Yep. And I'll spend time with her. Well, well, I I don't want to fault him for that because he wants to get to know Rocky yeah. now that he's her stepdad. Uh, yeah. I think that is a noble pursuit. Yeah. But also it's very funny because the second they let Rocky know what's going on, that Gia's going to go off with the moms and Matt's going to stay here so they can hang out. Rocky is like, oh, great. I get to hang out with my new stepdad and my ex-boyfriend. This is a good night. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly what I want in life. Yeah. Rocky, Rocky needs to stay away from these people. <laughs> Rocky needs to stay away from these people. Nothing good happens. Well, no. it's good for us. We enjoy watching. Yes. It creates nothing good great happens entertainment to Rocky value. when she comes here. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, the, but yeah, Rocky's here and we have the introduction of Steve, Matt, and Fernando having a boy's well, you're, night. You're, you're, you're skipping over. Here's the thing about this episode. Yes. We, we liked this episode a lot. It was actually yeah. a very good episode. Wow. Um, I think Tyler ended it saying this was maybe his favorite episode. I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's up there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of great it's, characters. It's a good it's, episode. It's well constructed. It has a lot of good character things, which the show is not always focused on character so much. Mm -hmm. But this episode does have that thing where I think I've talked about it before, where ideally sometimes you're writing and you cut from one scene to another scene and then you go to the next scene. And really those first the first scene and the last scene are kind of continuous. They should really be one scene. Uh, this episode and this show, honestly, does that a lot. Yeah. Um, because we completely, I didn't stop you, but we actually completely skipped over another scene. Oh, wait, what was the uh, other scene we? we skipped over? Yeah. Rocky is talking to Ramona. Oh, right. We skipped right. that. I, I, yes. I thought that was next. I don't know why, but. Because, because these two scenes that we were talking about should be one scene. Oh, right, right. <laughs> yes. Same, That's what I'm saying. It's the same thing we were talking about last time. But yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I, I just wanted to keep track of everything and also mention that because I remember it cutting to a new scene a lot in, in this episode and being like, this is a continuation <laughs> from two scenes ago. Yeah. Yeah. This is not new. Um, but but anyway, yes, yes, Rocky, Rocky is talking goes to talk to Ramona. To Ramona. And she's talking about the new deal with having a new stepdad and they're confiding in each other and and who should walk in but our favorite boy, Jay Money. Jay Money. Jay Money. He's here. And he's he did not know Rocky was here. And he's he's very, very excited. He has not he yeah. has not seen Rocky since they held hands at the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> and Rocky is like, what, did you think we were dating again now? And he's like, we weren't. <laughs> No, I didn't. And he's like, no, I didn't, I didn't immediately yeah. assume that. That would be weird. Look, you you held my hand. I said I may have said out loud. So we're dating now, but that didn't mean I thought we were like together. That's like just a thing people say. <laughs> yeah. It's just like I say that all the time. Hey, Ramona, are we dating now? Haha, -ha, that would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> 
Haha, <laughs> <laughs> JK. Unless. <laughs> Unless. <laughs> It's very good because the second they start, J Money walks in and starts this conversation. Ramona goes, "You know what? I am parched. I'm gonna go get something to drink." And, and she leaves. Long running joke of the episode, which is that yes. Ramona just this, keeps oh, leaving during awkward this episode. Yes, yeah. A long running theme of this episode is that Ramona is just in a lot of the rooms where weird conversations happen, and she just leaves rooms. And is very good at it. It's almost the only thing she does in this episode is leave the room when other people are having serious conversations. <laughs> yeah. Just and she's so old. good at it. She's so she's good. She's very good. It doesn't I love it's very it. good. We love Ramona. Um, yeah. But yeah, and and Rocky says to Jay Money, No, we're not dating now. We <laughs> we broke up, okay? We didn't get back together. And it's great. And I just like guys, it is weird that she never called him. I know, right? You don't just hold hands yeah. premarital. Yeah. You don't engage in premarital <laughs> hand holding without calling the person back. I know. Bro, did you seriously just engage in premarital hand holding? <laughs> How dirty. How dirty. Like, that's serious. Yeah. yeah. The Bible has rules. <laughs> yes. Thou shalt not hold hands with They have violated the law. Your wife. <laughs> the law. What are they, DJ? The law. <laughs> Not having respect for the law. DJ is the law. <laughs> DJ makes her own rules. But yeah, they have this conversation. And then it's boys night. Yay. Boys, boys night. night. And how should we celebrate boys night? By, you know, everybody sitting around drinking juice boxes and putting on the most manly show you can think of. Is it, is it a shark week? Mark, don't be ridiculous. We're going much more is manly than Shark. Is it something on Spike TV, guys, a network that guys, doesn't exist anymore? Guys, you gotta, you gotta think bigger. Is it The Bachelor? Bake Off? You're getting closer, but is no. Is it a show about, is like, guns and farts? Is it My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic? Ooh, you know what? That might be a little bit too manly for what we're going for here, Harrison. Oh, You may wow. have gone, like, a little bit... F- uh, you've, got, you've gone above and beyond, and I can respect that. But I'm gonna need you to dial it down a bit. Oh, what is it? We're we're do we're watching Real Housewives, <gasps> the most manly show I can think of. Not named My Little Pony. Friendship is magic. That might be a little bit too Real Housewives out there of for, Atlanta uh, for, uh, or for the Real boys. Real Housewives of New Jersey. They, they do not don't say. Specify. <laughs> they don't specify. <laughs> they do not specify. <laughs> I, it should be noted that there's one person who does not want to watch Real Housewives. Who is is it? Fernando. Fernando, yeah. who is wearing a full tracksuit, he wants to go dancing at Club Euphoria. <laughs> he wants to join the ladies at Club Euphoria. Yeah. Which I think that would just make it an everybody's night out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why he feels he's invited. <laughs> Fernando keeps begging to go to the club, and everyone's like, "No, Fernando, you got to stay here." And watch Real Housewives with us like a man. Yeah. What are you? What are you? Little what, not a man. You're a little bitch boy, huh? You little you little fucking bitch boy, Fernando. And and Steve actually says all this. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Here's I'm I'm looking at my notes. Here's the thing about this episode. We have still like skipped over scenes. <laughs> have, Jesus oh my Christ, god. Here's we? here's what. Yeah 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 yeah. Here's like here's not in a big way. But what happens, here's the order of scenes. We've okay, described okay. a couple of these scenes. Yeah, yeah, Okay. Matt and Rocky and Gia show up. Gia goes off to talk to Ramona. They get their marriage license notarized. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rocky talks to Ramona and Jay Money shows up. Oh, my God. Then they depart and Matt's like, hey, maybe Gia, you should go with the moms and I'll have a guy's night in. And he tells Rocky we're having a guy's night in. Then we go to Club Euphoria and watch the girls arrive oh, and Club Euphoria is um, super boring <laughs> which we can talk about next yeah. and then we go back and they start watching Real Housewives oh god okay I mean I'm sure every show does this to a certain extent but like, like splitting up the scenes in this way but it is a little disorientating right it's, it's disorienting especially when you have to recap it for a podcast yeah yeah I just I just wanted to make sure just because I know we're going to forget scenes because we're trying to structure it yeah. a little more naturally. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, we'll get back to stuff. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. They're watching the very manly show of Real Housewives. That's the joke. <laughs> yes. That's yes. the joke that it's not so manly, but they're men watching it. 
Yeah. Max yes. and Max and Steve watch it all the time, apparently. Max, Steve, and Matt don't need to engage in the toxic masculine assumption that you no. there are boys and girl shows. Girl shows can be just as manly as boy shows, and you should be <laughs> free to watch yeah. Or maybe you want. like yeah. manliness doesn't even factor into it. Yeah. Like maybe a good Femme show is a good right. show. <laughs> I just mean the arbitrary labels that media companies yeah. slap onto things for marketing, oh, yeah, marketing yeah. purposes. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's it's a thing and it's bad. Yeah. Guys, watch Real Housewives. Yeah. And watch Fuller House. Do you want the girl soap that smells like lilac or the boy soap that smells like gun? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I always want to smell like gun. <laughs> yeah, I want the smell of sulfur on my armpits. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh what was oh is that a new deodorant what scent is that gun <laughs> gun it's I, it really is funny like that it's like g- girls soap scented as summer lilac men's soap ocean piss <laughs> <laughs> old spice ocean piss <laughs> spice. really taking a dump on old spice there <laughs> Old Spice is great, okay? Terry Crews does a wonderful job. Yes. I'm No, I'm not done. I'm just, I'm g- in general. Men. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I know. <laughs> the fragrances marketed towards men are just like a mashup of various words, and it's very funny to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they don't really mean anything. Ocean punch. <laughs> Wait, you have ocean a problem punch. with ocean piss as the example? <laughs> Is there? So- you don't want to bathe with ocean piss. <laughs> Is that what you're telling me? You know, I've never thought uh, of that, but may- maybe I do want to try ocean piss. I should expand my my palate for for, for soap oh scents. <laughs> anyway, now that we're done talking about ocean piss. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Also, um, Matt is jealous of Steve's relationship with Max that they have such a good relationship. And Steve says, "Like, hey, it wasn't always that way. I, you know, it it, it took time to build this relationship up." And Matt and Matt says, "Like, yeah, that kid's scary. He reminds me of the Omen." And then it cuts to Max looking like the Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, his middle name is Damien, so. You know, yes. we should watch out for Max. He actually might be the yeah. Maximilian Damien Fuller. Was his father Tommy Fuller the first who died as a fireman? Or was his father maybe someone a little more sinister? Does that mean, wait, does that mean J Money is the son of the devil, but he's still the disappointing son of the devil? <laughs> wait, so you're, you're saying you're saying none of them are, because I was saying like, Tommy and Jay Money were the son of DJ's husband. Max is the son of the devil. You're saying that they're all the son of the devil, which would explain why Tommy is a bad baby. Yes. That's true. And, and Jay Money and is Money still is the just, fuck up because he's bad at being evil. It's just a disappointment. <laughs> that would be great. He's just very bad at being evil. Yeah. And hey, remember, as Tyler points out, Satan did win Sad Boy once. So it goes, it runs That's, in the family. He did. I That's forgot true. about that. <laughs> That is true. Every now and then I just think about our one-time winners of Sad Boy of the Week, and it makes me happy. Check out our episode on on uh, on Boy Meets World, guys. It's a riot. Anyway. But spe- speaking of our one-time winners of Sad Boy of the Week, maybe our first very silly one-time winner was in... Right. was Macy Gray, and this episode is sort of a sequel to that episode. Yeah! Yes, they go to the same club as before. Yeah. They mention how Macy Gray called them dancing lesbians. Mm-hmm. Like they mention, yeah. they name drop Macy Gray, Grammy Award winner Macy Gray, Stephanie's personal friend and alcoholic who probably bought Club Euphoria. Oh yeah, Re- remember when <laughs> yeah. Stephanie was a famous DJ? Yeah, that's right. Remember when Stephanie was a famous DJ for like five episodes, and then the show just forgot about that? Yep. Um, but anyway, yeah, speaking of Club Euphoria, they go to Club Euphoria, and as we hinted earlier, it boring. It's footloose. Well, the DJ makes like a, a bridal shower thing for Gia out of toilet paper that she just has on her at all times. They go into Club Euphoria, and they're like, oh, it's boring. Guess we'll have to start the party ourselves. And then a guy comes up to them and he's like, no, you can't dance here. It's illegal. 
apparently they got yep. noise complaints and so they needed to forbid dancing in the building the city revoked their cabaret license yeah. This not, but yeah they needed to forbid dancing at this nightclub yeah so here's my <laughs> question which i couldn't help but say over and over and over again while we were watching why don't they just go to a different club? They are in a major metropolitan area. There is not just one yeah. dance club in F San Francisco. Like, their, their uncle owns the Smash Club. <laughs> but true. Harrison, it's Club Euphoria. Ah, you're right. Home of the Weekly Dance-Off. It's Club of the Weekly Dance-Off, Club you're Euphoria. Right, you're right, the Weekly Dance-Off. And they're there already no there. Dance -offs. They're already you there. Once you go to a place, you can't just, like, go to another place. <laughs> yeah. Even if your family does own the Smash Club, which we have yet to see. <laughs> since, like, since like the episode they bought it in, yeah. But the episode they bought it in, it was still a laundromat. Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> Maybe they're going to make the, the laundromats into some kind of, like, disco light or something. Like, they're, they've been modified into, yeah. into the scenery. Maybe. Oh, they're going to lean into the laundromat Maybe. turned club theme? I think that would be a great idea. I like that. I like that. But would they, oh, wait, would they have to rename the club to, like, the spin cycle or something? <laughs> that would be so good. I really And, fun. guys... Do we have to open a nightclub called the Spin Cycle, and it's yes based around being yes based around a a la based around laundry? I think we definitely yep. should do that. A laundry themed nightclub. I think that's a good idea, and I stand by it. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, you know, DJ and the girls get really upset because they can't dance, and they're about to leave. And we but should also should mention. Show up? We should also mention DJ is being really mean to D to Gia for like no reason. Yeah. yeah. That at one point they're gonna do the she wolf howl and Gia's like, oh, I don't want to howl. And DJ's like, good, because we don't want you to howl. <laughs> just like, and she's like, yeah, good, because I don't want to. And and DJ's like, that's right. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's what right. And D and Gia is not mean. Gia has been mean to DJ. Gia is not mean to DJ in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. DJ's not this episode. Just, DJ just wants blood. <laughs> DJ's just mean. Maybe she has unresolved feelings for Matt. Maybe. Maybe. I love how we're Maybe. leaning into this interpretation that Matt is making this decision because of his rejection by DJ. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. You're not wrong. Well, Mark, there's really only one way to solve this. Steve, Matt, and DJ Thruple. Yes. Or I thought you were going to say dance-off. Also a dance-off. That also works. Also, but dancing's so there are two illegal. ways to solve this. Also, why are we... Oh, yeah, right. two ways to solve it. Also, Zach, we can't dancing's have... dancing's illegal. Zach, we can't have adultery. Obviously, the real solution is to have a quadruple. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, who's the fourth? Gia. What do you think? Gia? Yeah. <laughs> what do you Gia? think? Okay. Gia, Matt, yeah, that's, Steve, that's, DJ. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, but yeah, they're about to leave the club. They're about to be like, oh, this is, we're just going to call it a night and go back. But who should walk in but fan favorite one-off characters, the horny boys. Yes. <laughs> Max, Max and, and Val. Val. Max and Val, the they're horny back. boys. They are back. They're back. They're back. They remember DJ, Stephanie, and Kimmy. <laughs> yeah. Completely. Yes. Their and favorite dance they've partners. They've never forgotten just... about that night. They're their favorite like, dance partners. All the way back in like, well, I think it was like season one, episode three or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Like one of the, it was one of the yeah. first so episodes. It was, so it was four seasons ago. Yeah. I, I don't think the seasons correspond with years, but like multiple years ago in the chronology of these characters' lives. Yeah. Yeah. I think. But here's also my question. So Max and Val, the horny dancing brothers. Yes. Show up to Club Euphoria. Presumably to be horny and dance. Yes. But dancing is illegal at Club Euphoria. How long has dancing been illegal at Club Euphoria? That's a good point. I know. They just, like, show I, I know. up. I, because I thought that as well. Because the so. they made the same yeah. mistake, yeah. and I'm, I'm sure they were regulars of the club. Exactly. So I'm guessing it had to have been, like, recent, right? Yeah. Did, they, did dancing become illegal yesterday? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> And it completely changed the atmosphere, the decorations. The I, I mean, I don't. I mean, I will also accept the head canon of it's been illegal for like several years at this point. And yeah. Max and Val like keep trying to come in and dance and get kicked out every time. Yeah. Oh my god! To the point where it's like they come in and the manager's like, "Oh, these fuckers again." Well, some <laughs> point between season one and now, it became illegal to dance at Club Euphoria. Yes. 
Presumably, Max and Val have been coming regularly since then. Like, again, is it like last week? Was it yesterday? Why haven't they heard? Were they in an accident? Were they in some accident and they d- couldn't find out that Club Euphoria banned dancing? Maybe, Yeah, maybe. Oh, they- no. What happened to our horny boys? Unfortunately, this is never explained. Maybe the accident actually happened a while ago, but they have a uh, short term memory loss. So they keep coming back mm. to the club, expecting it to be like how it was <laughs> several years ago and keep finding out every night that it's, that it's busted. Yeah. <laughs> it's, or but they still remember or, BJ and yeah, Steph and Kimmy. I was, I was going to say or. Maybe they're not returning to Club Euphoria. Maybe they've been like following DJ Stephanie and Kimmy around. (laughs) They came to Club Euphoria not to dance at Club Euphoria, but because they saw them and they were like, oh, they're going back to Club Euphoria. It's another opportunity to dance with our favorite dance partners. So you're so you're saying they've been playing the long game for four seasons. Uh, Yes. Or in other words, stalking them. (laughs) Yeah. For four seasons of the show. For four seasons of the show. They finally saw the opportunity. Then they, that's why they came to Club Euphoria. And that's why they were surprised that Club Euphoria came band dancing because they were not here for Club Euphoria. They were here for DJ Kimmy and Stephanie. Mm. That's my interesting. Head interesting. I think now we go to boy back to boys night. N- Ramona and Rocky are talking. Oh, okay. R- yes. Ramona's telling Rocky about Ethan, the cute. Um, oh, yes. Nice guy. I lo- love that she's still super into the into him. It's so good. Yes. Yeah. And then who should come down? But J Money with a popsicle. Yeah. <laughs> and he makes it very clear. He's like, "Hey, Rocky, I would just like you to know that I'm holding this popsicle right now. But just because I'm holding it doesn't mean I'm dating this popsicle. Yeah. It doesn't mean I think I'm dating this popsicle. What am I, some weirdo? Um, yeah. He makes it very clear that he's not dating the popsicle, which means he's open. Rocky, he's still single. Yeah, yeah. Ro- Rocky, he's he's single. And then and then yeah. Matt comes in. And he's like, Rocky, I think we should get to know each other. I'm from Florida. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's just like, wow, it's it's Rocky's nightmare. Jesus Christ, she's yeah. just ready to explode. Yeah. Rocky just spontaneously combusts at the end of this episode. Yep, it's great. But Matt, she she shoots Matt down, and Matt leaves. And then I think I think at that point, maybe it was earlier, Ramona says, you know what, I'm going to take my chips and leave. <laughs> leave you two alone. Yeah. And then yeah. Jay Money and Rocky start having a really honest conversation where Jay Money is like, I think you're being too harsh on Mad. He just wants to get to know you. And then Ramona comes back in. She's like, you know what? I get so thirsty when I eat these chips. I need a bottle of water. I just like I just can't stop eating them. And then she leaves again. <laughs> Yeah, our good, our good Again, girl Ramona. The the runny theme is Ramona is leaving the room, yep. but she does it very well <laughs> in a yep. very entertaining way every single time. It's so good. Oh uh, yeah, it's very good. But yeah, Jay Money says I think you're being too harsh on him, and Rocky says, "Hey, you don't know me or my family." And Jay Money says, "You know, know what? I don't. Neither does Matt. But I think we'd both like to if you'd let us." And, and, and look at Jay um, Money being mature and smooth. Jay Money being mature and being a smooth boy. And dare I say it right? Yeah, actually yeah. correct. That's that's yeah. what what a redemption arc for Jay Money. Yeah. yeah, he's actually right about something, which is weird for Jay Money. Yeah, yeah. And and then Matt is. We go back to boys' night. Matt is complaining to Stephen Fernando that he can't seem to get in with Rocky. And Steve says, like, hey, you don't have to be her dad right away. You just have to let her know that, you know, you're not her enemy. And and Matt's like, that's good. Can you let her know that? And continuing with the theme of characters who are not usually right about anything being right about things, Fernando says, no, you have to tell her yourself. What a bro. What a man. In in a strange vote of confidence from Fernando. Yeah. Yeah. There's a very good line where Steve does say, like, Fernando's right. And Fernando says, oh, good, because it was I said it very confidently, but it was a toss up. (laughs) (laughs) He's just that's his strategy for life. Never know whether or not what you're saying is right. Just say it as confidently as possible. Well, yeah, Harrison, how do you think he got into so many car crashes? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you think they just asked Fernando, like, oh, you know how to drive, right? And he went, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I am a race car driver. 
and I am good at it. <laughs> do you think that's the job interview process for being a race car driver? They're just like, hey, you know how to drive, do you? Don't you? <laughs> yeah. I think, well, I, I was, we also, that would be my first great, question. I, I'm realizing we forgot to mention this earlier. There's also a very good Steve line when, like, they're all starting off boys' night. Yep. Oh, wait, no, no, I think they mentioned, I think, like, Fernando mentions going to Club Euphoria, and initially Steve's on board, and he's like, yeah. all right, let's get turned. Yep. And uh, and Matt's the one who's like, no, I need to spend time with my stepdaughter, and well, you got to babysit yeah. the child. Steve, there's a newborn baby. You have to look yeah. after the baby. But also, Steve saying, let's get turned, is Steve's very important saying, that, I, that turn. we it's had important. to mention it. He, he has, like, this bizarre stance as he does it, where, like, his elbows are like tucked into his sides and his hands are pointed towards He's, the sky. <laughs> like, we, we have a picture and yeah. it's like weird. It is weird looking and it's adorable. Yeah. It's very Steve. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Fernando keeps complaining about wanting to go to Club Euphoria. And Steve says, uh, if you want to go to Club Euphoria, just go. And we had noted earlier that Fernando was wearing a weird tracksuit throughout. <laughs> I think we all yeah. like noticed. We took note I of like did it it's because weird he wears what Fernando track suits doing. like that all the time. I yes. just figured it's, it was his well, it's, wardrobe. It's weird because like he wears track suits like that all the time, but like I mentioned it when he first walked in, and then Tyler mentioned something about him looking like a Russian mobster. And then Zach was so, like, like we were we were making note of it, and then Zach said Yes. Uh well they told Fernando, they're like, All right, fine, Fernando, if you really want to go to the club before it, you can. And then he got up and I was like, oh, I really hope that this is all like a tearaway track suit. And he's got actual dance clothes underneath. And then he tore off the suit and there were dance clothes underneath. And I was very happy about it. Yeah. I was very happy yeah. that I was right. Like, yep. wow. He fully tears away the track suit to reveal dance clothes. Yes. It's good. Wonderful. 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 Anyway, next scene starts the way many of these scenes have started where Ramona and Rocky are hanging out together and Ramona's telling her about Ethan and then Matt comes in and starts having a very honest serious conversation with Rocky and Ramona is literally in the middle of them it just <laughs> just yep. staring it's up so good the, it like as they're having this serious conversation about like I want to be there for you I want to get to know you I'm here for the long haul it's just, it cuts to just Ramona looking at them uncomfortably. Um, but Ramona does run away. She gets her space and lets yes. them have their space. Um, and Matt has a very good scene where he tells Rocky, look, I, I'm, i you know, I'm just, I'm in it for the long haul. I want to make this work. I love your mom. And. I know you guys have this really close relationship and I don't want to get in the middle of that. And Rocky is like, you're the first stepdad I've ever had. Who's really talked to me. Aww. And so they have this good, they, they make up and they're, they're beginning a, a wonderful friendship. Yay. Yay. Good for them. Yep. Meanwhile, Max and Steve are telling J money and Ramona about the real housewives. <laughs> Yep. Um, and Ramona's like, this show is degrading and sexist. And oh my God, did that lady just just throw a fake leg onto a dining table? I love this show. Fucking perfect. That is yep. basically what everyone says about every reality TV show with any yep. any quality whatsoever. So they <laughs> oh yeah they exist for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, and Rocky comes in and and thanks J Money for the advice of of letting Matt into her life and. And she she decides, in the spirit of giving people second chances, she wants to give Jay money a second chance. Aww. Uh, and it's it's sweet. And, and yeah. Jay money gets some honey. She kisses him on the cheek. And he, Jay money getting he, some honey, baby. And, and he says surprised. his famous. He's just, and he says his famous catchphrase. So we're dating now. We're dating again. <laughs> and then she, and says, she says, "We never weren't dating." <laughs> <laughs> and he's like wait we what yeah and she says yes jay money this has been a, a long long yep. strung out manipulation of your psyche no i'm just kidding yep she says we were <laughs> never broken up and he freaks out and he's like wait that doesn't make any sense you told me the exact opposite earlier and she says oh i love messing with you yeah which which makes it kind of work but it's still a little bit like what was huh <laughs> yeah 
Uh, yep, yeah, J Money and Rocky are back together. Yeah, they're yes. such they're such good foils. Yeah, they're very like, good for I'm each other. For I, I I remember when they were doing the J Money Lola stuff, and like Rocky is just so much better. Yeah, Rocky is so much better as a character to compliment J Money. So good because Lola was just like. Lola, Lola was, was a just normal Ramona's person. friend. Yeah, yeah. Lola was, Lola was just Rocky's friend and a normal person. <laughs> just Rocky is just great. Yes. Yeah. And the second Rocky shows up, just perfect person to pair J Money with. Mm-hmm. Yes. Anyway, uh, Steph sadly and in- we go back to the club. Steph sadly informs the horny boys that dancing is illegal at Club Euphoria. And they and they're like, oh, it's like Footloose. Or they say it in like a Ukrainian. Story. It has. It has a different. Well, it's like a, it's it like has a, a long yeah, it's Ukrainian like a knockoff. title. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a long like knockoff sounding title. Yeah. No, like you know the title was different in Ukraine. We yeah. have lost our feet because of bureaucratic the dancing. Something or because whatever. of the bureaucratic legislation against dancing. Yeah. Yes. In our, in our small town, you know, something yes. like that. And then they realize something. Wait a minute. Well, no. So it starts off. DJ gives this inspiring speech about how we all need to dance at club euphoria yep. and then she realizes wait a minute i'm a notary public i am the law <laughs> so if i stamp this napkin <laughs> the owner comes out and says that's a good speech but take it up with the law and dj goes i am the law <laughs> wait a minute i am the law and if i stamp this napkin with my notary stamp i can make dancing legal again <laughs> And she does. And that's exactly what happens. That, which is definitely how that works. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, to so the show's credit. They acknowledge it doesn't yeah. actually work that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. We were all going, is that how that works? And then Kimmy goes, is that how that works? And Stephanie says, like, uh, this is the most rebellious DJ's ever been. Let her have this moment. <laughs> yeah. It's very good. But guys, they are about to start the party but they've forgotten one very important principle, a rule that I think governs us all. Which is, of course, which is that don't double dip the Jess. party doesn't start until Fernando arrives. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Fernando's here. Fernando's here. He says, he says that says line. On his way in. Yeah. He yeah. jumps in and says the party doesn't start till Fernando arrives. And then Max and Val, they actually remember Fernando, and they remember, yeah. like, the d- dumbass bad yeah. guy version of Fernando from season one. So they, they were, were like, uh, they were they're really... like, oh, Fernando. And they're like, oh, no. And then Stephen came be like, oh, no, we like Fernando now. And they're like, OK, yay, Fernando's here. <laughs> yeah. Max and Val were really affected by this night. Yes. Yes. They remember everything about it. <laughs> yeah. I just think it should be noted how much they were affected. That's by how this strong night. a presence mm-hmm. the her family is on the yeah. on the world. Yeah. <laughs> Fernando yeah. has arrived, so the party may start. They have a full choreographed number to the song Footloose. <laughs> yes. I had not ever noted the lyrics of Footloose before, but they are strange. They are a little they are a little weird. Do we have them up for a moment? Uh, let me see. Here's the chorus. Uh-huh. So now I gotta cut loose, footloose, kick off the Sunday shoes. <laughs> Please, Louise, pull me off of my knees. Jack, get back. Come on before we crack. Lose your blues. Everybody cut foot loose. It is weird. It it makes sense, yeah. but like it's it's a weird I I I, lo- I just I love it. I love every once in a while just rhyming a name. Please, Louise. Jack, get back. Jack. <laughs> The phrase "pull me off of my knees," lose my yeah. blues, which which I understand. That's like you know, ah, get me up and get me dancing. But like I hear that, and it sounds somewhat like painful and violent. Pull me off of my knees. Yeah. Hmm. So they just just like Mortal Kombat style, yeah. rip your knees off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like that character in Mortal Kombat who rips your knees off. Yeah, knee ripper. <laughs> knee ripper. <laughs> Oh, I love playing as Knee Ripper. <laughs> oh, yeah. Knee Ripper was great. It's too bad they nerfed him in the new game. Yeah. You yeah, only can like... rip off the kneecaps and not the whole knee. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they decided that he was too broken in the last game. He was too OP. So now they now he only... So now he's like kneecap ripper and it's like, uh, that doesn't roll off the tongue as well. I know. It's just like, it sucks. <laughs> I like, I'm really disappointed. 
I I looked forward to nothing more than ripping off some knees with Knee Ripper. <laughs> NetherRealm Studios, how far have you fallen? <laughs> it's a damn oh shame. My God. Um, anyway, yeah, full choreographed dance number. We usually don't like the dance numbers, but I'd say this is maybe one of the strongest dance numbers. It was good, yeah. It was pretty good, pretty energetically shot. Fernando is central for a lot of it, yeah. which helps. yeah. Fernando had the best girls night out ever, as he says, as they return to their to the house. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then they go back home. They all she wolf well, yeah, howl they together. they do a she wolf howl, and DJ invites Gia to be a part of it, thus yeah. completing her arc. Yay! As we Yay. said, this episode is about characters. I know we I know we talked about how it's kind of weird in terms of the scene order and structure, but this was a good episode, and it was focused on character, and it had payoffs for all of the characters it's great yep i do like though you know they do the she wolf howl and and dj's like and gia <laughs> the and it's this emotional moment that's a payoff to everything and and resolves dj and gia's relationship yeah. you know earlier dj or gia very vulnerably confides in dj like look i want to make things work with matt and yeah. I'm, he's a great guy and i'm i want your help and but so they have that, which is a payoff. And then Fernando goes like, and also Fernando? <laughs> <laughs> and DJ goes, and also Fernando. And so Fernando joins in for the she-wolf howl. Yay. Yay. He joined girls' night. <laughs> he joined girls' night. Fernando's one of the girls. Uh, and anyway, they walk in. Steve is on the couch with the baby. It's very cute. He and DJ have a moment. And then the episode ends. Yeah, which brings us to our favorite segment, Sad Boy of the Week. Uh, I would like to nominate Matt, I, first I have, of all. I, I have only two in mind. Okay. Matt and Ramona. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Ramona's very good, yeah. yeah. I don't know, do, do we not want to nominate Jay Money? I don't think Jay Money was super sad. He had some, at first I thought he was going to be super sad. Okay. He, I yeah. mean... The popsicle the thing, very sad. The popsicle thing was very the good. The popsicle thing is perfect. The popsicle thing is very good. But right pretty after normal, that, pretty pretty, pretty mature. Yeah. I I was on the fence about J Money, and I was also kind of on the fence about Fernando, because he just really wants yeah. to be one of the girls. <laughs> That's true. I. But I think it's can, really down to those we, two. I think it's in, really down to Matt or Ramona. We can include Fernando because his arc is basically just he really wants to go to Club Euphoria. <laughs> Yeah, so that's his basically his entire case. Also, Ramona's case is pretty quick too. Just that Ramona throughout this episode is just caught in the middle of very awkward conversations <laughs> and has to awkwardly leave. It's so, good. It's so good. She's so good in it's this episode. Very very good. And then uh, there's Matt. There's who Matt, has, who is like the only actual like longer case. Yeah, Matt comes in to get his new marriage license notarized by his ex-girlfriend. <laughs> Which is very sad. S- starting oh, off yep. strong. Yeah. Um, he did not know that his new wife uh, has already been married three times. <laughs> this is her fourth marriage. And he is yep. caught off guard by that. Maybe he made a mistake. He decides to have a, a, a guy's night in. I think they call it a dude's night in. Boys night. Boys night. They should have called it boys night. They called it yeah. dudes night in, but that's not as good as boys night. <laughs> boys night. Yeah. Boys night. Boys night. He he wants to make a connection to Rocky, but he has no idea how to do it, and she doesn't want and she doesn't want anything to do with him. His first attempt is to say, Hi hi Rocky. My name's Matt. I'm from Florida, home of Disney World and Boy Bands. Now that's something about me. We have a relationship now, yes? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, when Steve tells him, look, you got to just make it clear that, you know, you're not the bad guy. You're there for her. His immediate response is go, OK, can you tell her that? <laughs> <laughs> As one is ought to do. She doesn't seem to like me very much. So maybe you can tell her for me. Yes. It's very good. Also, we should mention he gets really into Real Housewives. Mm. Mm-hmm. And in the end, he he's able to make up with with Rocky, though we're still not sure if he's over the revelation that 
his his new wife has been married three other times. To be fair, Rocky does say they're off to a decent start, and he yeah. is very happy about decent. Yep, <laughs> very, He's very happy, happy about, about decent. decent. There's a very good. He sells it very. He says like decent is great, and like he sells it very well. It's very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I, I think I, I got to vote for case. Matt this week. I you know I'm gonna go with Matt too. It, it was a very yeah, strong I, return for Matt. Matt yeah, Matt deserves it, and, but since you he has two votes, I am going to send my vote to Ramona just because I enjoyed her so much. <laughs> she deserves that. Like, she deserves it I almost it too, stealthily, but... I almost stealthily wanted to say like Matt has more to do and he's more central, but I just love Ramona so much. But like Matt deserves it. <laughs> yeah, Matt. Like, this is Matt. This is Matt's sure. episode to shine. Is, yeah. yeah. But I do want to just cast that little vote to Ramona if Matt's already going to get it from the two votes. That's fair. I'm looking at the leaderboard now. Matt is, like, up there. I did not expect Matt to have... Well, this is his fourth win. Ooh. I did not expect oh. Matt to have this many wins. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's it. it for us. Yeah. Guys! That was so much fun today. It was yeah. so good. Yeah. Everyone listening, please follow us on social media. We are at Fullest House Pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I hope everybody listening has a wonderful day. I'm Mark Green. I'm Harrison Bloom. And I'm Zach Horowitz. And until next time, may your houses be fuller, and may your housewives be real.